The history of science fiction is littered with tropes involving other dimensions, from the subspace communications and wormholes of Star Trek, which also happen to be coupled with warp drives working on a completely different concept of faster than light travel, all the way to Doctor Who navigating the TARDIS through what presumably is transdimensional space. These tropes provide an easy means to go from point A to point B in space and time relatively effortlessly. This makes for great stories, but they actually do stem from a legitimate question within science. Are there other dimensions that we can't currently perceive? This is a fundamental question, actually one of the most fundamental you could ask about the universe, and it's one where there are truly fundamental disagreements within the scientific community. One thing most of them do agree on is this. There are three dimensions we can perceive, length, width, and height. This is our 3D world, and everything we do in life is defined with interacting with these dimensions. But behaving suspiciously like a dimension is also time. So it typically gets counted as a fourth dimension, in which we're relentlessly moving forward. But the rate at which we do that can change. That's time dilation and relativity. In different frames of reference, you can move through time at different apparent rates. But there are further questions. If you reverse time, it's symmetrical and moves backward like a rewind button. But there's no really good reason why, which is usually termed the arrow of time. But as Stephen Hawking pointed out, what if there is a vertical or imaginary form of time moving sideways? And did that relate to the Big Bang? Was time itself moving sideways before the Great Singularity? Are there other dimensions of time? Physics has not fleshed out those ideas well. Part of the problem, of course, is how do you measure it? The Big Bang seems to have been an eraser that doesn't give you a way to peer into what happened before it. If time had been standing up, going about its business, tripped and assumed a horizontal position, moving from left to right instead of up or down, and that in turn formed a one-dimensional singularity that exploded into at least three dimensions, while time still wallows helplessly on the ground. This is simply not measurable. That which is not measurable is typically ignored in science. And there are other questions. Does time truly exist? After all, if you return a group of atoms to a previous state and configuration, then you've just effectively reversed time for all intents and purposes. Or in a universe where nothing ever happens, an infinitely unchanging landscape of equally distant hydrogen atoms that just goes on forever, then does time even exist in that situation? In such a situation, time itself becomes unmeasurable. In some sense, it still exists, but it might as well not. And that's often how we view whatever happened before the Big Bang. Widening out, this is not so much the case for asking if there are other dimensions of space and time. One of our most speculative and difficult to impossible to test theories is string theory. And this particular theory, with all of its different flavors, which makes exploring it like standing in a well-stocked ice cream parlor, which as a diabetic is dismaying since none are sugar-free, is why measurement is all important. If you can't measure something, hypothesize all you like. You're not likely to ever prove it. So how do you know if something is real if you can't prove it? such as the dilemma of theoretical physics. String theory, however, does make predictions about other dimensions, most commonly nine or 10 dimensions of space, one dimension of time, for a 10 or 11 dimensional universe. But there are variants where it's an indefinite number of dimensions, or it may as well be that there are no other dimensions, and what you see is what you get with the universe. We just don't know. But maybe there are hints in nature that suggest the existence of other dimensions, tantalizing clues like all too sparse chunks of chocolate suspended in the ice cream. Wishes we might that there were more, but no dice. Before we get into the possibilities of other dimensions, it pays to define just what a dimension actually means in science. In science fiction, it can be envisioned as a whole realm, where you can be like the Q from Trek and play Twilight Zone games in a universe within a universe. But that's not really how it works. Rather, the whole idea of dimensions comes down to a simple point of view. A dimension in its purest form is just a set of directions, length, width, height, or you can express it as X, Y, Z, or forward, backward, up, down, right, and left, adding in time its forward and past. But the aforementioned Stephen Hawking added more attributes to it, 
as though it were a full dimension as we know it. It may have those attributes, but it doesn't seem to let you navigate it, other than move some flavor of forward through it. Something about the universe governs this. You can move east towards the vanilla ice cream, but never west, meaning you can't ever go back to mint. Oddly though, you can still see it. After all, looking into deep space shows us the past, as the universe once was. So the reality of other dimensions is sort of boring in that sense. It's fertile ground for imagining possibilities because what's actually possible is such an unknown. Sure, you can invoke upper dimensions as a way to effortlessly ply the cosmos and go wherever you want to defeat the vast distances. But what you don't know is if an upper dimension actually allows that. It's equally probable that it simply doesn't. You can't know without measurement, and that eludes us. All we have are theories, and those theories do not necessarily paint the same picture as science fiction does. But ideas like string theory do make predictions, so we can at least play with what other dimensions might be like. But murky territory it is indeed, and may well reflect nothing close to reality. In string theory, if it's actually how the universe works, the dimensions have specific roles. So think of it like this, a straight line existing only as length. Add a dimension and you get a square. Add a third dimension and you get a cube. You could say that time is the fourth dimension with the cube moving forward through it. There ends what we can readily perceive. Dimensions 5 and 6, at least in superstring theory, the world would look only slightly different. Seeing it would give a baseline for trying to measure the other dimensions by looking at differences between our world and dimension 5. Go to 6 and you might see a plane of all possible universes stretching from a single point, the Big Bang. This opens up the possibility that backwards time travel becomes possible, if you can harness the 5th and 6th dimensions. Or there may be a prohibition on it we don't know about in those dimensions. But those dimensions are still tied to the initial condition, the Big Bang. In Dimension 7, this falls apart and you have access to all possible universes including those that do not start with the Big Bang. So in 5 and 6, you get all possible worlds that stretch back to the Big Bang, in 7 you get all possible worlds that stretch back to the beginning of time, whatever or whenever that was. The 8th dimension is where these possibilities stretch to infinity. In 9, it's all possibilities including all possible variants of all of the laws of physics. And 10 covers all possibilities of everything including everything. At that point, you'll see Gandalf fighting a dragon that likes frozen treats, but in that world fire doesn't get extinguished by ice cream. And there may be yet more dimensions after that but physicists simply can't envision what they would be like. For string theory to actually be the case, however, these dimensions are absolutely necessary, which may mean it's off base. More, these dimensions have to be somewhere, and there likewise has to be a reason we can't currently see them, though they may have been more evident during the Big Bang. This is the idea that the other dimensions have curled up and are somehow compacted, but there's also the idea that we live on some sort of three-dimensional subset of the universe or multiverse at large, which stems from brain theory. While wild stuff to imagine, none of it may exist at all. Observations of the gravitational waves emanating from neutron star mergers seems to contradict the idea of other dimensions. The reason is that if those dimensions exist as we envision them, the gravitational waves could be expected to weaken over distance traveled in a characteristic way as the gravitational energy bleeds off into other dimensions. That would be required to explain the accelerating expansion of the universe in string theory. Observationally, this does not appear to be the case, but with a caveat. It only covers large dimensions. Curled up or very tiny ones are not eliminated by this, and do not knock string theory out. At the same time, however, there may actually be indicators of other dimensions that we are aware of. One of these is dark matter. It's possible that the reason we have no idea what it is, other than our measurements of its gravity, is because it's simply matter in another dimension that cannot interact any other way with the matter of our dimensions other than through its gravitational effects, which smear across perhaps all dimensions, which is why it's so notoriously weak. Another question is the geometry of the universe itself. There are a number of options there that might define the shape of the universe though current observations point to a flat geometry for the universe. Well, geometry into what? Another dimension? No one knows. 
Yet another are wormholes. What do you go through when you travel through one, if anything at all, or if wormholes can even exist? We just know that they are consistent with relativity. Yet another is spooky action at a distance, quantum entanglement. How does a change in state happen between two potentially very distantly located particles halfway across the universe from each other? Another dimension might be the answer. But ultimately it goes back to measurability. Do other dimensions even matter if you have no way to ever prove them? Do they really offer the chance for navigation through time and other universes? The answer is we may never know. It may not be possible in our universe to ever answer the question, and we, and everyone else that may be in the universe, may forever be stuck in the dimensions we know. And the universe we see does not contain anything that would allow us to really know. But I leave you with this question. Since we know so little, what if the nature of other dimensions and their interactions with each other is dynamic rather than set? If something, say a manifestation of dark matter under the right conditions, could be perceived in other ways, beyond just gravity. Here the universe goes very wonky to say the least, but imagine for a moment if you saw it. Would you see it as an object, or would your brain paint in some interpretation for lack of a reference point in its normal experience, as though it were seeing an optical illusion? In short, would you see something transient and inexplicable, and would anyone believe you if you told them? Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently hungry for ice cream, but recognizing the cruel realities of the universe. My favorite flavor is probably mint chocolate made with real sugar, which lies in the past and I can't ever go back to it, given that I have traveled to the parallel sugar-free universe. Sad indeed, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this confusing universe in which we live.